Hi, this is Amr Abdigawad, and we're going to speak today about clubfoot, or what's known in uh, some books as Talipas equinoverus. So what are the objectives of this lecture? First, we'd like to describe the pathology of the clubfoot, and then we'd like to list the instances of the clubfoot in different situations, keeping in mind that clubfoot runs in families, uh, and then we'd like to explain what is the clinical presentation of the club foot. So how can you see when you see a child know that if he has a club foot or not? And then we'd like to compare the different treatment options of the club foot and give a, a general uh, idea about uh, these treatments. And then uh, finally, we'd like to identify the risk factors for recurrent of the treatment for club foot. A good source that you can use for this is uh, the handbook, Pediatric or Orthopedics, a handbook for primary care physician. Uh, this handbook is written by myself and Dr. Naga. So what is the definition of a club foot or talibus equinoverus? As we said before, the definition, it is a rigid congenital deformity of the foot. So it has to be rigid. It cannot be corrected by the examiner and it's a congenital, so the child is born with this foot deformity. So this is a child who has a left um, a talipus equinoverus or a cloth foot deformity. We're going to speak about um, the uh, clinical components of this deformity in details later on in this lecture, but in brief, it's a four, it's a, the hind foot is inverus, uh, there is equinus of the ankle, and the forefoot uh, has a deduction or it's tilted inward. Uh, you can see this is a, a, a pathological uh, um, uh, the section um, here is the talus and here is the navicular if you see the navicular is um, uh, subluxed medially and this is bringing the whole foot uh, into inward direction also the calcaneus is in inverus which means that the calcaneus is pointing inward in relation to the talus we're going to speak about the clinical picture of uh, this child in details uh, later on in this lecture so what is the etiology of the club foot? Uh, the etiology of the club foot is unknown. So no one knows exactly why these kids have a club foot. There have been lots of theories that have been proposed, muscular, neurogenic, genetic, and connective tissue. Connective tissue. However, none of them has been uh, confirmed. Currently, there have been lots of studies going on for uh, genetic theories for the club foot, and there have been some genes uh, that have been identified uh, in a close association with patients with club foot. Let's speak now about the instance of club foot. The instance of club foot is one in 1,000 live births, so it's a relatively common condition. Uh, it happens more in boys than girls, and 50% of the cases are bilateral. So 50% of patients who have a club foot ha will have both feet affected. The condition runs in families, so despite that the, uh, pop the instance in the general population is one in 1,000, uh, if a family has one child affected, their chance of having another affected child uh, jumps to 10%. And if a parent is affected and a child is affected, the chance of this family uh, having another child uh, with a club foot jumps to 25%. So after we discuss the instances of club foot, we're going to speak now about types of club foot. There are four main types of club foot, which are idiopathic, postural, neuromuscular, and syndromic, and we're going to discuss this now. So idiopathic club foot, but this is by far the most common type. This is not associated with other congenital anomalies or syndromes, uh, and it has to be a rigid deformity. Postural club foot, this is a deformity that can be easily corrected by the examiner, so it looks exactly like the idiopathic. However, if you examine the child and try to put his foot in the corrected position, you will find that the deformity is flexible and it can be uh, totally corrected. We're going to see uh, some pictures and videos for that later on, and this is not considered as a real club foot. Other two types of um, club foot are syndromic club foot and neuromuscular club foot. Syndromic club foot, uh, there are some club foot that are associated with congenital anomalies like arthrogryposis or diastrophic uh, dwarfism. Neuromuscular conditions that sometimes associate with club foot are meningocele or meningomyenocele, and these have the club foot either at birth or shortly after that. So this is a picture for a patient who has a spina bifida and in the same time he has bilateral uh, club feet as you can see in this picture. Cerebral palsy uh, usually develop equinoverous deformity due to muscle spasticity later in life. Uh, so because of their tight gastrocnemius muscle and tight um, tibialis posterior muscle, they develop equinoverous deformity similar to the uh, uh, picture of the club foot. Uh, so these are the four main types of club foot, idiopathic, postural syndromic, and neuromuscular. So posture club foot, as we said, looks exactly like the idiopathic club foot. However, 
uh, if you try to correct the deformity um, it corrects uh, easily so this is a patient uh, that I was called for to, um, because um, the uh, treating physician thought that he has a right club foot however when I examine him you can see the deformity is fully corrected I was able to correct the equinus I was able to correct um, the varus so this is a posture club foot it's not a real idiopathic club foot uh, these deformities usually improve with time they don't need um, uh, lots of treatments uh, all what you can do is um, just teach the parents some stretching exercise and that usually improve by itself so this video will show us the difference between rigid club foot and posture club foot so this child was referred for Así bilateral club feet but if you see on hacer. his left side the deformity can be fully corrected so the whole deformity can be fully corrected on the left side however if you see the right side i'm not able to correct the deformity i'm pushing as hard as i can however i can correct the deformity on the right side the deformity can be easily corrected on this side but not on the right side So let's speak now about the clinical presentation of idiopathic club foot. It has to be a rigid deformity, as we said before. There are three main deformities of club foot. This is very important. There are three main deformities of the club foot. The ankle and foot equinus, first one, hind foot varus, and forefoot adduction. We're going to describe these three things in details now. There are other three components of the deformities, uh, which is cavus of the foot, and we're going to show this also in the picture. We, there is internal rotation of the leg, so the whole leg may be internally rotated. And the last thing you can see that in unilateral cases, the size of the foot and the calf on the affected side is going to be smaller than the other side. So three main deformities, ankle and foot equinus, hind foot varus, forefoot adduction. Um, the three other deformities, which is cavus of the foot, internal rotation of the whole leg, and the size of the, the foot and the leg are smaller than the contralateral side. So these pictures now is going to um, explain for us uh, the deformities that we described. So these four pictures are for the same foot um, and is going to show us uh, the three main deformities and the cavus deformity. So if you look to these pictures, uh, so here we can see that the foot uh, is pointing downward in relation to the leg. So that's what we call the equinus. It means that uh, rather than having a normal appearance of the foot, which is at about 90 degree to our leg, uh, the Point, the foot is pointing downward so this is ankle and foot equinus here we can uh, see the hind foot varus it behind foot is the posterior part of the foot so instead of uh, it pointing downward as usual it's pointing completely um, uh, uh, medially uh, or to the inward uh, side so this is a um, hind foot varus this is forefoot a deduction forefoot is the anterior part of the foot so rather than the anterior part of uh, anterior part of the foot being in line with the posterior part of the foot it's uh, pointing inward or medially and in this picture we can see obviously the cavus cavus means the high arched foot so you can see that this child has a high arched foot and you can see that this deep crease indicate that high arched foot um, again these four pictures can show us the equinus so we can see the equinus in this picture very obviously uh, the ankle and the foot rather than being this way in relation to the tibia they are uh, pointing uh, downward we can see the hind foot varus uh, very obvious uh, the hind foot is rather than going down as usual it's pointing medially where the forefoot a deduction rather than the forefoot being in line with the uh, hind foot it's pointing medially and we can see the cavus here very obviously this is all also a picture for um, a club foot but this child has bilateral uh, club foot and we can see the pictures here uh, this picture show us the equinus very obvious so rather than the foot is about 90 degree to the leg it's in line with it so it's pointing downward you can obviously he see also here the high arched foot and you can see that deep crease indicating that high arch and you can see here that the forefoot uh, is pointing inward in relation to the uh, hind foot and you can see also so that the hind foot is pointing medially in relation to the leg so again there's three main deformity equinus you can see that obviously hind foot varus it means that the hind foot is pointing uh, inward you can see this also very um, clearly here forefoot a deduction means that the anterior part of the foot is pointing inward you can see this very obviously here and here so these are the three main um, uh, deformities of the uh, club foot also other deformities include the uh, cavus which is the high arch uh, that you can see here and here uh, other deformities that you can appreciate um, is that the, sometimes the 
whole leg uh, is internally rotated um, and in unilateral case you will find that the affected foot and calf are smaller than the other side after we discussed the clinical picture of club foot let's speak now about the management of club foot so you saw a child and um, you examine him he has a rigid deformity so you diagnose him with having a club foot so what do you have to do now First, no radiographs are needed for these newborns. So if you have a newborn with idiopathic club foot rigid deformities, no x-rays are needed because it will not add anything to your management. You need to do an orthopedic referral for these patients so they can have their treatment done. And basically there are now currently, um, there are two treatment options for these patients. The first one, which is uh, very common, is the Ponsetti method, which is serial cast. So these patients have a um, um, cast every week and then gradually correct the deformity um, with the new techniques called Ponsetti method or um, they may be referred for physical therapy and stretching what's called the French method. So um, there are two main treatment options for uh, uh, newborns and young infants that have club foot is the uh, serial casting with the Ponsetti method or physical therapy and stretching. Please uh, note that this is completely different than what we uh, used to do uh, about 10 years ago. Ago. Uh, 10 years ago, all these kids used to have surgeries when they are about six months to one year. However, this is not uh, the case currently. Currently, most of these patients can be treated non-operatively or with very minimal uh, surgeries done. Uh, and the main treatment now is either, either serial casting by the Ponsetti method or physical therapy by the French method. We're going to discuss that in more now we're going to, to explain what is the Ponsetti method uh, in brief. Ponsetti method is the serial cast, as we said. The cast is changed every week, and uh, the deformity is gradually corrected. First, uh, the first cast is to correct the cavus part of the deformity, and then the cast after that is to correct the hind foot varus and the forefoot adduction. If you can see the shape of the cast first, this is from the front and this is from the side. So basically, the cast is applied in a certain way that the orthopedic surgeons uh, know how to do it uh, and then they st you start pushing the foot outward um, with time and this should correct your hind foot uh, and your um, hind foot varus and your fourth foot a deduction um, um, about 70 percent of these kids uh, may need a small procedure to cut the achilles tendon to correct the equinus um, and bring the foot and the ankle upward uh, this correction um, of the equinus by achilles tenotomy can be done in the clinic or in the or depending on the surgeon preference and the family preference this is a picture for dr ponsetti um, and he is describing the treatment and the post casting regimen uh, for a mother and her child so uh, ponsetti may, uh, method is a serial casting the cast is changed every one we every week uh, first um, the cast is to correct the cavus uh, the ca the cast after that it depends on the uh, 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 on the deformity so more rigid deformity will need more cast and um, uh, the cast after that is to correct the four foot a deduction and the hind foot varus and then uh, the last cast is to correct the equinus and before the last cast the child may and uh, require achilles tendon tenotomy either in surgeries or in the clinic one very important element of treatment by Ponsetti casting is the bracing after the casting. So usually the casting is after four to seven uh, serial casts, but then the child has to be in a brace for a long time. This is called abduction orthosis, uh, and what the idea of this abduction orthosis it, it it's a uh, two uh, orthotic shoes that the child uh, foot will be in, and then a bar connecting these two shoes together, and the affected leg has to be in about 45 to 60 degree external rotation in relation to that bar. So we see here a child uh, that is in this brace. You can see the brace. Uh, the bar here is in between the two shoes, and the shoes is in about uh, 50 degree external rotation in relation to that bar this the, the child after a correction of the club foot by the Ponsetti casting has to be in that abduction or thoses um, for about two to three months full time and then he has to wear it at night for about two years this is a very important part of the treatment and the, um, the pediatrician should um, emphasize this fact for the families uh, because the studies have shown that uh, families that are not not um, compliant with this have a higher instance of recurrence of the club foot deformity. 
after we had discussed the uh, serial casting by Ponsetti method, we're going to speak now about the second uh, non-operative option for kids with club foot, which is the stretching exercises or what's known as the French method. This depends on uh, stretching exercise that are taught to the family so they can do it and also done by the therapist uh, at frequent visits so they can stretch the child foot uh, to the corrected position. Uh, the problem with this treatment option, it requires more commitment from the family and more visit to the healthcare providers, which may re result in more costs. So this treatment option is not common, as commonly used as uh, the Ponsetti casting. So children who are not treated uh, when they are infants or they are not fully corrected, uh, they will present later on in life with recurrent or residual club foot. It means that their deformity um, was not corrected or was not fully corrected and the child uh, still has a part or the whole deformity. So if you see this is a three-year-old girl uh, that was never treated before. She's presenting with the, the deformity of the club foot. She, so she has equinus deformity. She has um, a four-foot adduction. She has a hind uh, foot varus. Uh, and she's presenting now at the age of uh, three years. Uh, for these kids, um, they have be refer they have to be referred for an orthopedic surgeon. Um, a trial of uh, casting can be done in the beginning to decrease the deformity. However, uh, in most cases, they will have to have um, a surgical surgical treatment of the deformity, either open surgery or application of external fixator to gradually correct the deformity. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much.